Right, places, everybody. Places. Richard, now, as soon as the lift gates open, you all board, and then I shall present Captain Peacock with his 20 years service badge. Hmm? Rather an emotional moment, isn't it? 20 years in this place is almost as much as the train robber's got. <laughs> Oh, Captain Peacock, in acknowledgement of your... Mr. Lucas, the man! Oh. Too late, have lost him? Oh. Cut up in his moment of glory. <laughs> Hold them, basement. Uh, you shouldn't we just follow him. <laughs> Quick, yes, into the other lift. Come on, give it up. Come on. Give it up, Captain Peacock. Press the button, Mr. Lucas. Right. Just a minute, he's coming. The lift's coming up again. He's coming back. Thank God, stupid lot. May I say that this comes as a great... Where are they? They've gone down to the basement with your medal. Stupid. Just a minute, they're coming back. We missed him. Well, you've just missed him again. He's gone down to the basement to look for you. Oh, oh come on. We seek him here. We seek him there. It's like looking for the Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> Hang on. He's back again. He's coming back. Oh, places, everybody. Quickly now. Right. I'd like to say it gives me great pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, it gives me great pleasure at all. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I'm going back to my counter. Mm, the moment has rather lost its magic. Oh, yeah, send him to my office when he comes in. I say, I say, I, I say, uh, uh, I'm here. Right, yeah. Places, everybody. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Captain Peacock, in acknowledgement of your 20 years' service here at Grace Brothers, it gives me much pleasure to present you with this back. Uh, the letters GB in 22 karat gold plate. <laughs> uh, that's a complete surprise to me, and I'm most touched, not to say honoured. <laughs> In addition, and as a special token of your particularly excellent service here, the management is taking the unusual step of presenting you with this key. What's it for? Your flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, key to the executive washroom. The key to the executive washroom. Yeah, I really didn't expect this. It is indeed an honour. The key to the executive washroom. <laughs> I've served here for 35 years and I've never been one. You must be thirsty. <laughs> well, I've been here longer than Peacock. Could I have to knock in with the rest? <laughs> well, I have a further announcement to make. Oh, not another honour, sir. That would be too much. Yes, it would. No, uh, this doesn't really concern you directly. I just wish to remind you all about the change in the lunch break. Oh, well, 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 the management feels that we are losing a lot of trade by closing between one and two. So in future, we will take our lunch break between two and three. Hmm? I don't think my stomach can hang out that long. Well, it's been hanging out for the last ten years. <laughs> Mr. Granger, would you inform your junior that if he doesn't watch his tongue when speaking to a lady, he'll get a bat round the ear hole? Ah, stores open to your counters. Uh, Captain Peacock, one more thing. Uh, regarding your application for an increase in salary. Oh, yes, sir. It has not been approved. Indeed. Sorry to hear that. But I am, however, here to tell you that the management has seen fit to extend to you the privilege of using the executive dining room. Executive dining room? See you at lunch, Stephen. Well, thank you, Captain. <laughs> it's still Mr. Rumbold's. I'm sorry, sir. Please forgive me. The key to the executive washroom went to my head. I quite understand. Look at him flaunting it. <laughs> I've wanted that key all my life. Well, you're not management, Mr. Granger. No, you're not even in line for the throne. <laughs> Are you being turned, sir? It's hardly likely. I've just stepped out of the lift. <laughs> well, in that case, I will rephrase the question. Can I help you, sir? Now, I'm looking for a bow. A bow? Tie, violin, or Robin Hood? <laughs> Very funny. Do oh, forgive me, sir. I'm in a rather frivolous mood today. You see, this is my anniversary. I've been with Grace Brothers 20 years now. Well, in that case, you'll know where I can buy a clip-on bow tie. Clip-on bow tie. Yes, a clip-on bow tie. You know the sort. Right? I know what they are. Mr. Granger, are you free? Yes, I'm free. <laughs> this gentleman wants a clip-on bow tie. A clip-on bow tie. <laughs> clip-on bow tie. Well, I'm very sorry. I'm afraid I can't help you with Captain Peacock. I'm just going to the staff bob. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henry, are you available for a clip-on bow tie? I have never been available for a clip on both times. <laughs> Mr. Lucas will attend to the customer forward, Mr. Lucas. Thank you very much, Mr. Humphreys. Good morning, sir. Did I hear you say you were interested in a clip on bow tie? No, that's, that's, right, that's right, that's right. I think you'd be kind enough to just take your tie off, sir. <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> now then, there we are, sir. One clip on bow tie. The springs on these are very strong, you know. They're so strong, they sell quite a lot of mouse traps. <laughs> there we are. Uh, how, how does it look? How does it look, Mr. Humphreys? Awful. <laughs> Oh, it's not your fault, sir. It's a clip-on bow tie. 
Why are you trying to sell me an awful tie? We're not trying to sell it to you, sir. You said you wanted it. <laughs> Nobody's wearing them much at the moment. No, except you. <laughs> but, uh, what occasion was it you wanted them for, sir? Well, it's, a, it's an army reunion. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. no sir wouldn't want the rest of his regiment to think that he'd gone to the dogs, would he? <laughs> Talking about it, I've got my own building firm. <laughs> no one would ever guess it, sir. A boat tie like that. Oh, what, what do you suggest? Well, no, sir, excuse me, for two pounds, sir, you could have a pre-tied velvet on a piece of elastic. <laughs> a lot of people are wearing these, aren't they, Mr. Oh, Humphreys? yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, they are, Mr. Humphreys, yes. That is, of course, if they can't afford a proper one. Proper one? Well, what do you mean, a proper one? A handmade watered silk. Oh, that's a look. They are five pounds, sir. Oh, that's all right, I can afford that. <laughs> so, Mr. Lucas. I'll make up the bill, Mr. Humphreys. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, uh, how do you tie it? Oh, there's a diagram inside the box. <laughs> well, show me how you... Tell me how you tie yours. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that. I always wear one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him, I said, young man, I said, if you don't take your hand off my knee at once, I'm getting off this bar stool and going home. And did he? He did not. So you went home? Eventually. <laughs> anyway, he's taking me to the pictures tonight to apologise. I do hope he behaves himself on the back row. How do you know you're going to be in the back row? I've booked. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Oh, good morning, Miss Nash. Here we are, then. Six jumpers. Six pairs of earmuffs. <laughs> and I brought out these, uh, 24 pairs of, uh, Sensi Touch rubber gloves. Sensi Touch rubber gloves? Been listening to the artists lately, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Common as muck. in the kitchen department. Yes, you already are, but they all did a thousand pairs too many, you see. They want to ship them. <laughs> oh, I've got a Sensi Touch. Display model as well. <laughs> hey, hold on a minute. Airtight and watertight, guarantee. But, but what's it for? Ooh. Wash your day hands, what you care for so much, can still play the piano with a sensitive touch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see anything so awful in all your life? I don't make them, lady. I just deliver them, as the midwife said to the bishop. <laughs> Not at the moment, Mrs. Slocum. Can I help you, madam? No, thank you. Are you free now, Captain Peter? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Slocum. Just look at this monstrosity. I have already seen this excellent display model, approved it, and given authority for it to be used on your counter. I see. Then I shall have to go through you to Mr. Rumbold. Are you sure you want to question the decision of your superior, Mrs. Slocum? Captain Peacock. You may have the key to the top person's toilet, but you are in no way my superior. And women live longer than men. <laughs> I don't see what that has to do with it. I know, but I just thought I'd tell you. <laughs> For the last time, Mrs. Slocum, do you wish to question my judgment? Yes, Captain Solomon Peacock. I do. In that case, I shall have to put the matter before Mr. Rumbold without further delay. Good. And may I say that I disapprove of your using this rude tone to me in front of a junior. Captain Peacock, I'm so sorry. Miss Brahms, would you mind removing yourself a few places and covering your ears? Yes, Mrs. Slope. Pompous twit. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do if Rambo would approve? I'm not taking any chances. Pass me the scissors. Oh, Just once more. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> a little bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> Up and over, make a bow. Through the hole, and there we go. <laughs> It's quite simple, isn't it, sir? Now, I'll have a go on you. <laughs> Long way. <laughs> Up and over, make a bow. Through Mrs. Uh, Slocum, are you free? At the moment, yes. I have told Mr. Rumble that you wish to defy my executive decision, that the sensor touch display unit is suitable for your counter, and he has come over to give his executive ruling to dispose of the matter once and for all. Yes, well, I, I haven't actually seen it before, but I'm sure if Captain Peacock likes it, then it must be all right. Oh, it's right up Captain Peacock Street. May I show you? Please. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Uh, the ladies, please. Lingerie or powder room? I'd hardly be one of the powder room. Just a little joke, sir. Only just. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum. May I assist you, sir? Uh, yes, I want to buy a dress. Certainly, sir. About what age? Uh, Footish. Oh, the younger middle age range. Quickly, Miss Brahms. 
And about what size? It's for me. Hold the reins, Miss Brown. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. It's for a fancy dress party. Oh, I see. All the men are going as girls, and all the girls are going as men. How amusing. <laughs> yes. Very gay. Take Miss Brown. Would Sir raise his arm? There we are. <laughs> Forty-two, including the spectacle case. <laughs> Will sir be wearing any padding? Well, I thought a couple of oranges would get a big laugh. <laughs> Tangerines will get a bigger one. <laughs> I want something under ten pounds. Something from the cotton seconds, Miss Brown. From the maternity range. <laughs> Can I try it on? Not in my department, you can't. We have to use the men's. Captain Peacock, are you free? You called me, Mrs. Logan. This gentleman is going to a fancy dress do and wishes to use the gents' facilities to try it on. Yes, the gentleman's department would be more suitable. Uh, this way, if you please, sir. Thank you. Mr. Granger, are you free? I'm sorry, Captain Peacock, but I'm just going to have my coffee in the staff case. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm busy pricing my ties, Captain Peacock. The gentleman wishes to try on a dress. I'm free. <laughs> It's for a fancy dress party. Oh, yes, sir, they all say that. <laughs> well, they're, they're throwing very nicely, sir. Yes. They're very snug, too. A bit too snug, I'm afraid. I need a larger size in jacket and trousers. Oh, dear. Perhaps I should try something with a bold check. A bold check. I'll hang this up here for you, sir, while you transform yourself. I've made on. Oh, have you? Oh, God. <laughs> Yes, I'm afraid we haven't got much in check. Ah, oh, here we are, sir. How about this one? Ah, oh, yes. What do you think? Is it me? Well, it's certainly not the dress. You know, I don't know why men do it. It's going to look awful in a dress. Yes, it didn't look all that much in the trousers. Ah, oh, there we are, sir. And there's your old jacket and trousers in the back. Excellent kit. It feels worn in already. Yes, very nice, sir. We sold one of those to Robin Day the other day, you know. When he retires, he's going to work as the test card. <laughs> what have you done with that check suit? Sold to my customer, Mr. Humphreys. Oh, our aid. <laughs> they never should have let Mr. Humphreys fit him. He's been in there for hours. He's probably trying to chat him into an handbag. <laughs> uh, you just have to give me a new suit, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Well, I, I, I'll try and try and do something. Look, you better wait in here. I can't. I'm dying to spend a penny. Oh, well, look, here. <laughs> Hitch your skirt up and speak with a Scottish accent. <laughs> Can I help you, sir or madam, as the case may be? I want the jets. At the top of the stairs. Thanks. You should have used the powder room when I first suggested <laughs> What time is it? One o'clock. Oh, another hour to lunch. I wonder if Mr. Granger will lend me his chair. You do look a bit peaky, Mr. Humphreys. I'm not surprised. I've had no breakfast. A friend of mine was supposed to do some shopping for me and he let me down. This morning I got up, I thought, oh, I wonder what's in the fridge. When I got there, the cupboard was bare. Well, that's not like you, Mr. Humphreys. It's not. I usually keep a bit of something tucked away. <laughs> you never know when it's going to be a rainy day, do you? That's true. Yeah. Anyway, I found an egg and I boiled some water. And do you know, could I find my egg timer? No. Right. <laughs> so I picked up the phone and I dialed the operator. Did he know where your egg timer was? No. I'm surprised him. I'll smack your wrists in a minute. <laughs> anyway, I said to him, could I have an alarm call, please, at three minutes past eight? He said, it's eight o'clock already. I said, I know that, but I'm boiling an egg. <laughs> Not quite nasty, but he had a very nice voice. <laughs> anyway, by the time we'd made it up, the water had boiled dry, the egg was like a golf ball, and I had to run for my bun. There must be something in the fact the egg. Delaying our canteen lunch is a contravention of human rights. Eating our canteen lunch is a contravention of human rights. <laughs> I'm going to phone the factory inspector. I know how he feels. Oh. If my wind gets any worse, I'll have to hoist gale warnings. <laughs> I can't stand this. I'm going to see if I can organise something. Oh, I'm starving. So am I. But I've taken steps to keep going. Quick, while Peacock's not looking. I could the percolator. <laughs> yeah, it'll be perking any minute. Oh, smashing, I could just do with that. Hang on, Peacock's coming. Looking forward to your lunch, ladies. By two o'clock, that canteen will seem like the Savoy. Yes, I'm sorry I shan't be joining you there as usual. Oh, going on a diet? Again? No, but not only have I the key to the executive washroom, but from now on I shall be taking my lunch in the executive restaurant. I just thought you'd like to know. Oh, you're Lord Mutton now, aren't you? 
Yes. <laughs> I'm rather looking forward to it. It'll be very nice to have a choice of wine with one's chicken fricassee. Oh, is that what they call the Rissoles up there? <laughs> Right now. Oh, very nice. When I was in the Western Desert, of course, we, we were trained to go for long periods without food and water. You learned it from the camels, I suppose. <laughs> I was just making the point that I'm able to cope with the situation more easily than you are. Don't worry about me. My stomach can hold on as long as yours can. <laughs> Rommel would have heard that from ten miles away. Have you found the package, Inspector? No, no. I had a change of heart. I've been very well treated at races, and it won't be very long before I retire. I wouldn't like to be branded as a troublemaker. Either. A word in your ear, Ernest. Yes, Captain Peacock. I'm, I'm sorry if my elevation to the executive washroom upset you. I, I mean, I, I could have refused it, but, well, that might be construed as taking a stand against the uh, management. Oh, yes, Captain Peacock. I think you'd be far better off standing with the management. I'm glad you see it that way. Oh, it's only just that... I had hoped that one day I should have that key. Well, uh, no hard feelings then, Ellis? Oh, no hard feelings at all. <laughs> I I'd be delighted if you'd have lunch with me today in the canteen. Well, I I'm afraid I can't. You see, from now on, I have to take my lunch in the executive dining room. The executive dining room? The executive dining room? Glass of water for Mr. Green, sir. I don't want a glass of water. Where's that paper? Tell your stomach everything's all right. I've fixed it. All we've got to do is get Peacock off the floor. Have you got some sandwiches? No, I've done better than that. Get rid of Peacock. Yeah. <laughs> Slocum, ladies. Oh, hello, Mrs. Slocum. It's Miss Williams here, accounts. Could you tell Captain Peacock that one of his figures is in dispute and we'd like to see him up here immediately? Very well. Captain Peacock? Yes, Mrs. Slocum. You're wanted in accounts. Thank you, Mrs. Slocum. Mr. Humphreys, I'm wanted up in accounts. Are you really, Captain Peacock? <laughs> yes, Mr. Humphreys. Would you take over for me while I'm away? Would you like me to take over standing here or walking about? Don't be facetious, Mr. Humphreys. That's a perfectly proper question. And my answer is that I wish you to take over for me as floor walker while I'm away. Very well, Captain Peacock. the window. <laughs> and stop messing about. I get up by the lift and press the button three times. <laughs> Welcome to Maggie's Meals on Wheels. Get your seat off me. <laughs> Mother, that's all your mind strong steaming up or already blown. Yeah, Come on in. Here we go then. <laughs> Sorry, second sitting in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I never did like lentil soup. <laughs> what did you decide on? Shepherd's pie. You always did like adventure. When I went past, the flies were enjoying it. Oh, never mind. Put plenty of that brown sauce on. You won't see their footprints. I'm really going to enjoy this. What did you settle for, then? Melon ball. Unusual. <laughs> Mr. Granger, will you take a whiff of this filter and give me your opinion? I I'd rather not, Mrs. Slocum. It might put me off my road mob hearing. But I can tell you one thing, Mrs. Slocum, about that filter. It's definitely dead. Yes, which is what we said for that green thing, what's walking across your lettuce. <laughs> Tough little monkeys, aren't they? <laughs> they have to be to eat that lettuce. <laughs> Got it. Ooh, it's right, put me off eating. It's giving him out of an headache as well. <laughs> Disgusting. That's nothing. He always eats his soup like that. If you want something really disgusting, get him some spaghetti. I meant the conditions in the staff canteen are disgusting. Fancy having to wait an extra hour for this. I don't think it'll happen again. Mr. Granger phoned the factory inspector. Well done, Mr. Granger. 
Yes, I did. But apparently Captain Peacock had complained earlier about the extra late luncheon. He said that it upset his desert stomach. Yeah, the inspector said they've got no right to make us eat late. Then he took one look at this place and went off to see young Mr. Grace. I shall be interested to hear his report. If he had anything to eat here, it'll be a loud one. <laughs> I think they're taking him to the executive dining room. Hello, there goes Rumble. I bet he doesn't get things crawling about on his lettuce in the executive dining room. They don't care, you know, as long as they're all right. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Hey, right? I'd better step aside, that. Eh? What are you doing, Mr. Mash? Well, I'm bending my knees, aren't I? That makes my bottom go plump on the chair. <coughs> oh, sitting down. This has always been our departmental table. Yeah, well, I know that, but as Captain Peacock's gone up in the world, I thought I'd take his place. <laughs> There's a vacancy over there, by the pig bin. <laughs> Charming, isn't it, eh? One of these days, mates, we'll all be equal. Then I'll be in the executive dining room. Hang on, here comes Peacock. Oh, making his maiden voyage to the executive dining room. Uh. <laughs> he didn't even speak to us. All power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> Snorkel for Mr. Granger. <laughs> Peacock, welcome to the club. Do sit down. Thank you. This is very nice, isn't it? Ah, you join me in a glass of wine? Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Let me 25 pence. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not now. Later will do. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Thanks. Soup du jour, lentil. Laurel mop herring, la cultured salad, a la shepherd's pie. <laughs> to follow an apre wheat mint. <laughs> Great improvement on next door, eh? Yes, we think, sir. Oh, well, sir. Amusing little wine, isn't it? Hilarious. <laughs> Peruvian Beaujolais. Type. <laughs> yes, I must remember that. Well, this is a great moment for me, sir. When one struggles, one does one's best. One fails frequently, but occasionally one succeeds. And then finally, after a long journey, one arrives. Don't get up. I I'm sorry to spoil your lunch, but I'm having trouble with the factory inspector. Somebody from one of the departments sent for him, and it seems that the canteen is too small for the number of people using it. Yes, I was aware that it should be a hundred square feet bigger, sir, but what can one do? <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm having the whole thing knocked into one. But what about the executive dining room? That's the least of your troubles. You've got to use the scarf bog as well. <laughs> Carry on, boys. You're doing very well. <laughs> 